Hello, and welcome to another episode of Inside My Showroom, episode 10. Here we have Doom on Throne, the review. And uh, I am Doom. <laughs> Bow down to Doom. <laughs> You're a clown, bro. <laughs> and in the exclusive version, I have my drink. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is episode 10 of Inside My Showroom. And uh, with myself, Omar, and my buddy, Chris. Uh, how's it going, Chris? Pretty good, bro. What's going on, guys? So you uh, you basically have a sweater for everything, every statue that you <laughs> that you have in your collection. So far, man. So far, <laughs> so far. I I can't disappoint the audience, man. And you know, like it's Doom after all. Um, yeah. Got like the nice green tunic at the top here. You know, I'm sure I didn't pull off Doom exactly how other people would want to, and whoever. In, owns the statue probably wants to sell it now and i probably devalued it but anyways uh <laughs> you know here is a special episode of inside my showroom it is officially episode 10 thank you so much to all the people that watch um these are all live episodes unscripted we don't know what we're going to be saying we don't know how it's going to be going going uh half the times we just make idiots of ourselves but that's fine um so let's get to it man like episode 10 and uh, we wanted to bring you guys something special um we pretty much wanted to review this since day one but you know we wanted to get it out there and uh so i'm just gonna take control of this chris yeah bro do you think okay so i'm going to be taking over the screen just let me know when you can see Dr. Doom. Blam, right there. Perfect. Okay, so uh, this has been a statue that's been reviewed many, many, many times. Um, there pretty much is not a collector who doesn't know about this statue. But, you know, new people are joining all the time, so we get the privilege of being able to you know, review this. Hopefully, it will be one of the like uh, videos that people see. Um, people that are trying to decide if to buy this statue or not, if it's worth the hype. Um, the statue has definitely skyrocketed over the years. Um, how would I give you the floor, man? You could get started first on like one or two points that you just want to, you know, call out. Um, the thing about myself is i've been a collector basically since you know sideshow started back in the day um you know back in like 2005 and uh chris is actually kind of like a new collector i have the privilege of talking with him uh discussing things with him and that sort of thing so what do you, what are your thoughts chris as a new collector so i knew about this piece from probably the first week that i started collecting um Pretty much the moment I entered the community, um, specifically the Facebook community, um, I knew about this piece. Um, just really sought after statue, really um, valuable. Um, and like Omar was saying, you know, uh, I've only been collecting for a little bit over a year now. Um, so it's been like a year and a couple months. And um, Omar was pretty much one of the, the first dudes I started talking to um, in relation to statue collecting. Um, he kind of like showed me the ropes. Um, I mean, there was a point in time where I didn't know what PCS standed for, um, Pop Culture Shock Collectibles, uh, the company. And, uh, you know, he's the guy that kind of cleared that up for me. He's uh, pretty much the guy that um, showed me the ropes on everything, you know, uh, when it comes to resale value, you know, what's a fair price for this, what's a fair price for that, things to look out for, um, kind of like the statue terminology that people use within the community. Um, so like this piece, like I said, I knew it, you know, within the first week of being a part of the community. Um, he taught me, I mean, I found out about words like grail because a lot of people consider this to be a grill. 
and rightfully so. Um, I just, uh, you know, you said to make a couple points. Um, this is Doom on Throne. Um, there's not a lot of on Throne pieces. And I think that this pose and the fact that he's on the throne kind of just suits the character really well. Um, I was actually, I'm not a huge fan of Dr. Doom. I didn't know too much about him. So to, in preparation for the video, I went ahead on Google and just to look up a couple points of Dr. Doom. And let me just read you the first basically sentence of what I just finished re reading. So his real name is Victor Von Doom. And, um, okay, so he's a Latvian monarch, also known as Dr. Doom. And in a deal with the devil, his mother sacrificed her soul in return for her son to be a ruler. So he spent most of his uh, life studying both dark magic and science, um, only to have his plans continually foiled by the meddling superheroes like the Fantastic Four, um, and other guys uh, well known. But that alone, I did not know that his mom sold her soul to the devil. That's kind of, I don't know, a dark kind of thing. I didn't know about Dr. Doom <clears throat> and his past and his origin. So that, that was pretty cool to read. And um, so he's basically like a monarch. He's a, he's a ruler in, a, in an alternate time. And I just feel like this uh, this pose and the fact that he's on throne speaks so much for the for the character. Agreed, a hundred percent. Thank you so much for that background, man. Even that was like some uh, new information to me. And you know, I follow Doctor Doom. Huge fan of Doctor Doom. Um, not necessarily from uh, the comics too, but just because he goes way back. But um, just from like some of the animated episodes, uh, the movies, um, the collectible trading cards back in like the 1990s, one of the very sought after cards that I wanted to find um, back in like 1991, 1992, 1993, they had the Marvel um, collectible cards, which I was like a huge, huge uh, spender on. Um, probably would have had so much more money if I wasn't wasting my money on those cards. But um, they actually had a hologram of him, which were the rare cards. I think there were five um, holograms back in the day. One of them, I remember, was Punisher, Silver Surfer, Doctor Doom. And then I think there was like some other cards, like maybe like Spider-Man versus Venom or those sort of things. But definitely Doctor Doom was one of them, one of the very rare, rare, rare cards. And I actually had it. And the second I um, got into it, like the rest is history, you know, Dr. Doom was definitely up there for me. I think he is a phenomenal villain. And um, the nice thing about Dr. Doom, when we kind of like see a lot of like the Marvel characters um, nowadays, it's kind of like a new vision of, um, you know, creators who created Venom, you know, Venom's like, from the 1990s. This is a character that dates back to 1962. Wow. First appearance, Fantastic Four number five. And he was literally created by Stan Lee. Okay, Stan Lee was the writer and uh, Jack Kirby was the artist. So here we actually have a character, okay, that is made from Stan Lee himself. That on its own is revolutionary. Um, you know, like I said, there is so much uh, reviews already on this statue, but you know, we have him in hand, why not review it? Um, let's just basically start on the statue itself. Okay, so there we have Doom. Um, there is some mixed media in this statue. Uh, which is obviously anything that's green on him is mixed media. Um, even down to basically, you know, the tunic at the top there. Is that like double sided? Because I see the inside is kind of this nice shiny um, material. And then on the outside, it's this really fine matte kind of, uh, is it like double? It double is double, um, but it is like you can also see stitching within. Right. Oh, nice. I kind of want to give it like that feeling where if you take it off, it does look like an actual garment. It does look like an actual robe. Yeah. Um, you know, that tunic at the top, 
can take you like hours to days to months to years to pose it absolutely the way you want to perfectly. I see some people, they get so frustrated, they just literally take it off and they just like um, have it like thrown behind him and you just have like the mask showing, which is an option. Um, some people just do not care for the creativity and can't be bothered to pose it properly. Um, you know, I tried to pose mine as close as possible to how it's shown in, you know, the box art, how it's shown in, you know, like all the pictures that you see directly from the sideshow. Took me a lot of time, took me a lot of frustration, a lot of like, you know, heated blood, but it's worth it, man. And sometimes, you know, like it's a piece to be admired for years to come. Um, and sometimes, you know, you just want to go and like, do some alterations to it you know but it's actually um like a wire within the tunic so that you can you know precisely pose it exactly how you want to and not really have to worry about it turning flat like a year later and be like oh wait you know why did it do that so um it's great it's basically like memory fabric if you will just because of like the way that it's made the wiring the strong wiring It'll stay the way that you posed it. Um, if we were to go on to talk about every single detail about this, um, this statue will be here literally like eight hours, which will be, <laughs> you know, so we got to kind of skim over a little bit of the things here, keep the video short. Um, you know, by all means, grab something to eat, grab something to drink, enjoy our episodes as usual. We like people to have a good time. We're not like professional graders. We're not professional reviewers. We're just like, you know, the average person, just like yourself, basically, um, trying to get the knowledge out there, the little that we have. So um, basically, next thing I want to move on to is the mask. Absolutely phenomenal no detail in the mask. Uh, this mask is beast-like, if you will. Uh, his eyes, I cannot zoom in, unfortunately, on the eyes just because, you know, there's some shadowing um, from my lighting, uh, nothing to do with the statue. But if you look closely into the eyes, you'll actually see like little burn marks, which I don't know how Sideshow got the ability to, I don't know if they put the mask on afterwards or if they stuck like a little paintbrush in there. But that is some extremely precise painting where you can actually like see like the mutation, like the mutilation of the skin, the burns that have been caused to, you know, Victor's face, which he hates to see himself. You want to beat this guy, show him himself, show him his reflection, what he's become. Uh, and you'll have him on his knees, basically. So he hides his face. He cannot stand to see his face. He used to be very handsome. And, uh, you know, in the accident, uh, unfortunately, this, uh, this had to happen to him. Um, that, that grip that he has with his hands, you know, basically like he's thinking, he's brainstorming, you know, as much as he's um, – like in a serious pose here, he almost looks like a little bit relaxed, like as if something has come to his mind finally, like how he's going to, you know, destroy the Fantastic Four. And there's so many different takes on Doctor Doom. Actually, in one of the recent comics, um, you know, Mr. Fantastic actually healed his face. Um, so it's like pretty amazing to see what's going to take place there. I haven't really kept up with the comics. And then, uh, you know, this is one of the guys who have given so many people trouble. He's given, you know, the Fantastic Four a run for the, their money. Um, the Avengers, like we're talking about Thor, Iron Man, Hulk, all of them. This is a man solo that can take on the Avengers, right? This is a man that has brought Silver Surfer to his knees and, you know, taken the Silver Surfer's powers at one point. So, you know, they call this the grail of the statue. I'm not just saying that it's a grail only because of the fact that Sideshow did a good job on it, but it is Dr. Doom, right? Um, 
Chris, why don't you take over, man? I've been talking for a while here. Yeah. Um, going back to what you were saying about the uh, the grip that he has on his hands, I'm gonna have to completely agree with you. It, he just looks like a uh, like a ruler that just I don't know. He just looked over his plans and he's like, "Yeah, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna move into this territory next. We're gonna conquer this next, or this is how I'm gonna defeat the Fantastic Four. And he's kind of just there, you know, thinking like, "Yeah, this is this is what's gonna happen." And I think, uh, like like I said earlier, that that pose really suits him. Um, going back to the mixed media, as you guys know, I'm not a fan of mixed media. I prefer fully sculpted, but for characters like this with a hoodie on. I think it's perfect, um, and specifically on this piece, um, I really don't see mixed media done, you know, to its full potential. And I think it works on characters like this, where they have kind of like a not a baggy, you know, but kind of like a hooded cloak on them. Um, I really don't think it works with the skin tight outfits, like the Wolverine Premium Format or something like that. Um, I prefer fully sculpted, but on a statue like this, I, I really, I'm, I'm, it's growing on me a, a, a lot and it's growing on me fast. And, um, I think it looks really nice. Um, and you know, you have the both sides, you know, the inside is kind of this shiny material and on the outside, it's just nice. You know, it, it looks, it looks intricate. It looks delicate. It looks expensive if it was really Dr. Doom on throne, you know? And um, it looks really nice. Um, I mean, the paint, you know, to his armor. Um, it looks very medieval-ish, you know, kind of armor. Like, you know, we just stepped into mid medieval times, and you know, we're we're doing uh, some lance, some lancing on horses or something, you know. And that's a very good point, man. Yeah, I mean, the armor, his armor, just looks really medieval, and. I really like it. Um, the sculpting, the paint looks absolutely awesome. Um, again, the pose and the helmet. Um, I was actually just on Sideshow's website um, looking at their archives for, for when they had this, um, you know, on order. And I'm looking at the uh, the official Sideshow pictures, and I'm, I took a look at what you were talking about with the eyes, and that looks sick. I didn't even know that, to be honest. I thought, um, you know, underneath the mask was kind of just black. I didn't know you could actually see his face. And that is just, that's kind of ridiculous, to be honest. Um, I mean, just the attention to detail there is kind of kind of flawless. Um, and also, I mean, I don't know if you want to kind of twirl Doom around while I discuss this. Um, sure. But just all the details on the throne itself, I mean... That that looks like a ruler's throne, you know. That looks like a seat that somebody of power would sit in. Uh, not just anybody would, you know, would, would be allowed to sit in a chair like that. You know, you, you wouldn't find a servant or a peasant sitting sitting on that specific throne. That looks, you know, I mean, all the details, all the different colors. You got kind of this bronze, you know, theme going around on the on the side and then this really nice stone texturing um and i think it's really well done you know um so what i don't want to like hang up on here right like um dr doom has basically been out like i would say 11 to 12 years now right um, he's the very first sideshow premium format statue the very first um which can basically add to the point of why is he a grail? He is the very first. This is basically like um, related basically to Action Comics number one. When you think about, wait, why is Action Comics number one selling for $75,000 on eBay? It's because it is the number one statue. Every single statue that comes out, sorry, um, the comic, right? Um, Action Comics number one is the very first. This is the number one statue. And, um, Every statue that comes out afterwards, it cannot take the place of Doom on Throne. Doom on Throne is officially the first sideshow premium format quarter scale statue. Um, that in its sense is a reason to call it a grill, but I don't want to just like sit here and be like, oh, you know, he's in my possession, he's a grill, he's this and he's that. We've seen that in other videos. I would actually like to discuss 
the fact of details in this statue. Um, you know, where do we think like the statue community is going to go from here sort of thing, right? Um, let's move past the fact that he is a grill and just like admire a little bit of the details that we have in the statue. So first off, um, we're seeing basically right here that there's some cameo appearance of Wolverine. This has been called to a lot of people's attention many times is the fact that we have Wolverine, uh, Lady Death, Lady Death right here. We have some uh, visuals here that basically look like marble. Um, I actually saw one video where this popped off. Not going to do that. Um, I don't know if he damaged his statue or not, but mine is in place and it's going to be remaining that way. So we have so much detail in here at the bottom, you know, for, a, you know, pretty much, let's just say for peace sake, 12 year old statue, the amount of detail that we have in here, um, statues to come for years have gone downhill. We're starting to see a little bit of a pickup. Um, here we are basically 2016 going to 2017 we're starting to see some more detail, which is actually really nice. But for a long time, we've just pretty much like hit the highest point back in 2005, kind of gone downhill a bit. Um, there have been some great statues since then, like Venom Comicat, um, Punisher Comicat. But, you know, other than the few highlights that we've had, um, not many of them have been able to live up to the detail that we have here, Doom on Throne. Like if we just even look at the detail right here alone, okay? This throne can basically be considered the base of the statue. And uh, a lot of base in the newer statues are just either pretty plain or just, you know, doesn't fit the statue very well. But like, look how much detail we have here. Like even down to this, this looks like, you know, like the rubber mats, like on a throne that you see and like you can actually see it like literally like impression where his uh, elbow is touching here. Oh, that's, that's sick. Yeah, it's, it's a really great detail. Um, I don't feel that anything lacked. Um, but the thing is, is that one point that I just want to discuss here is that for a statue that's basically, you know, over a decade old, I see people unfortunately and unwillingly having to part with this piece. And that's to me, what makes this piece so special is the fact that, you know, it basically started off in like the 200 and, you know, $49 price range, I believe, right? Um, and since then, the price has just been going up and up and up and up and up. And, you know, for whatever reason, people have to sell the statue if it's, you know, just trying to put down on, you know, their first car, or, you know, an expense just came up. Oh, no, the furnace broke, you know. Um, for whatever reason, there's many stories as to why people have to sell their statue of an amazing grail here. And to me, I would like to focus on that is that, this is a statue that would basically break anybody's heart to have to sell. And like myself, um, I actually had owned this statue back in 2005. It was my very first premium format statue. Um, it's actually the very, the second collectible piece that I've ever owned as an adult. Um, so I feel actually very privileged. <clears throat> Excuse me. I feel privileged that, um, you know, I was basically there from day one with Doom on Throne, and it's not something that I had to find out about, like, you know, a couple years later, five years later, decade later, that sort of thing. I was actually privileged to um, be a part of the release and um, get to know about it from day one. And um, basically, my heart was broken because I had to sell it. I had to part with it. I was actually moving into my first home. And uh, I had sold it basically 10 years ago. <clears throat> Thought I was getting um, the deal of a lifetime. 
I sold it originally for nine hundred dollars Canadian, which probably works out to about what six hundred bucks U.S. right now. Yeah, so much. Um, and I did not think that uh, the statue would be going up very much more in price. And I promised myself, you know, I'm doing this for my family. I'm doing this for my, you know, first home. Once you know finances become a little bit good again, I'm gonna come back for you, Doom. Don't worry, I'll be back for you. And uh, after a couple years of being in my home, I just decided to, you know, eBay it and uh, see like what the price had gone up to. And at that point, it was like at twenty five hundred US, and it was just pretty much out of my price range. And um, you know, this statue is extremely expensive nowadays. Um, December two thousand and sixteen, we're basically looking at anywhere from three thousand US to five thousand US on this piece. Uh, depending on how lucky you are, if you are even willing to get one at 3000 US, not sure about that. But, uh, you know, this is, you know, for over a decade old, when you see these starting to show up on eBay, they say mint as possible, but, and there's always a but, um, you know, maybe there's a scratch going along the base of the back or, what I see a lot is, you know, a scratch going down the leg. This one is pretty much as mint as possible. I don't really see anything, made sure that I inspected it. Uh, my story behind this is, is that um, this is actually a piece that I always wanted back in my collection. I've, I've come a very long way in collecting and it just didn't feel like a complete collection. And I think a lot of collectors will know what I'm talking about. It's that it's like, you know, you see these awesome collections and they have doom. Well, I had doom, you know, or I want doom and my collection is not complete without him. And, uh, you know, when I was like taking into consideration, okay, well, you know, at that time when I was searching basically a year ago, what am I getting this doom at? I kept on seeing 3,600 US, 3,600 US, and I'm in Canada, so to pay customs on a $3,600 statue, to pay shipping on a $3,600 statue, you are gonna literally be paying through your nose. <laughs> Here in Canada, customs on a statue like this would literally get so close to $1,000 Canadian. Wow. So, um, you know, I just wasn't really prepared to spend that kind of money um and lo and behold i saw somebody on kijiji list it um right here like, <laughs> on like, what on kijiji it's basically like craigslist i don't know oh, if you okay, okay yeah so uh kijiji is basically like usa's craigslist gotcha um, it's actually owned by ebay and it's a classifieds it lets you um like list classifieds for free so it's right. basically like a free alternative to eBay, um, local peer-to-peer -peer trading. Uh, you know, they can either drop it off or you go pick it up, that sort of thing. So I saw this guy, Liz Dumont Throne, and he's like, I'm not going to go into detail what I spent on it, but um, he's like, this is my price. Absolutely no low ballers. Don't even ask me for a cent off. I will not sell to you. I respect that. I um, I totally see where he was coming from. Did not want to insult the guy, and uh, I gave him a call up. He said he was willing to come and drop it off because he's actually coming in the area. And uh, little did I realize, Chris, it was actually one of the very very popular people on the statue forums. Really. Uh, and he actually had the best display of Doom on Throne out of all the Doom on Thrones that I've ever seen. And I did not know that it was this guy that was uh, selling it. So, um, is he still on, uh, on Facebook? He, I don't think so. I don't oh, think okay, so. Okay. He, he, uh, he got out of it. Um, this was his last piece that he was parted with because, you know, he wasn't sure if he wanted to really sell it or not. He was kind right. of holding on to this. But, uh, you know, his situation was, was that he was starting out in life. And uh, that was my advantage is that, you know, I've kind of already crossed that hurdle. I wanted Dr. Doom back in my collection. 
And now he was basically at, you know, the starting point where he wanted to move into his own condo. Um, he needed the down payment. He came and he dropped it off. And um, he was in silence a lot. And I actually felt very sad because I know what he was going through. I know it's a statue. It's kind of like, you know, very, some people would say it's stupid. It's a statue and whatever. But if this is your passion, you need to realize that, um, some people, they care about their car a lot. Some people, they care about their home a lot. They care about whatever their passion is. Um, for this guy, his passion was his collection, his statue collection. Like me, the same, this is my passion. This is what I enjoy. This is what I love. Um, so I knew what he was going through. I didn't want to, um, you know, undermine his feelings or anything like that. So I actually took him to my collection and I just actually showed him. I said, I just want to show you that, uh, you know, this is my collection. This is my showroom. Just know that your statue has a good place. And um, guess what? He actually started crying. Wow. He actually cried in front of me. And that actually kind of tore my heart a little bit. But at the same time, I had like a happy feeling. Like as much as it, I felt sad for him. I kind of felt happy in a way, like a selfish happiness that it's back in my collection. Um, and I actually felt happy for him, the fact that um, it was going to a good place. You know, like I know that I would basically make him proud, you know, that, hey, this is in your collection. And here we are doing a review of it today. You know, like his, uh, his, his statue did not go in vain. And if he ever watches this video, he'll know that, you know, I am talking about him. Um, and he told me, he's like, listen, you know, one day I'm going to get my, you know, feet back on the floor and should you ever sell to him on throne, hit me up first, you know, but I can't do that. Um, you know, if anybody's going to be selling this, it's going to be my son. And, uh, this is pretty much his collection after, you know, everything is said and done basically. So you know, I just didn't want to basically just be sitting here and saying the same thing over and over and over of, you know, oh, it's a grill, it's a grill, it's a grill. Yeah, we everybody knows it's a grill. Anybody who even joins uh, the whole statue thing like yourself, Chris, will catch on very quickly that this is the grill. And that's why I didn't want to waste my time just discussing that. I wanted to kind of touch on other factors. Um, real quick, uh, like you said, uh, whether or not you join the community now, you know it's a grill. Um, that's a true grill for you, bro. Um, like, that's a real grill. You know, not not everybody has, you know, that kind of story, um, you know, to to go with their statue. And I think that's that's what makes that a true a true true grill. Not, it's already a grill, but it's like ten times more of a grill to you. I can't even imagine, just because of that experience. And um, I think that's awesome, man. It's an awesome story that you were able to get linked back up with, basically your favorite statue. And um, I mean, it's always cool to hear those kind of stories. You know, a lot of guys that own him now, you know, they pretty much just dished out the money because they thought he looked cool or because, you know, everybody regards him as a grill, but you were there from day one, you know, and um, unfortunately, you know, there came a time in your life where you had to let go of him for bigger and better things, but it's still something that you really loved and you came back to it. And that story is awesome, man. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. And the thing is, man, um, that's why, you know, just simply doing a review of Dr. Doom itself. Um, that's not what I wanted to do here. This is episode 10 for us. We've been gaining a lot of subscribers, a lot of love from the community. Thank you so much to everybody who's, you know, just watching our videos, being a part of it, hearing our stories, that sort of thing. That's why I didn't want to bring Dr. Doom on here and just talk about how magnificent he is. I just kind of wanted to give like, a little bit more of a deeper meaning to this statue and yeah he's a grill yeah he's the first one but there's more to it than just that you know um he's the first sideshow piece um so many people have had to been broken hearted why they had to sell him 
And, you know, just when you do see it in people's collections or you see it online and that sort of thing, realize that there's so many life stories behind it. Like instead of just stating, oh, oh yeah, nice collection. I, I see Dr. Doom there. How did he get in your collection? Are you the first owner? Um, you know, how, how did you decide to pose him? You know, those sort of things. There's just so much more to it. Um, but yeah, like just a little bit back to the statue. Um, so here in the corner, he actually has like a gun holster, which like on the belt, the belt connects and he actually has a gun at the side, which you cannot see. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't realize that. I didn't know that. Even when I owned him the first time, yeah. I did not know that. It's until the second time I actually saw, wait a minute, there's a gun at the side there. Awesome. So, you know, it's a phenomenal piece. I really, really love it a lot. Um, you know, there have been some great statues since then. Like basically XM Studios Magneto is one of them that I really, really love. And, you know, it's basically the piece that I feel that can live up to Doom on Throne or if not, maybe even surpass Doom on Throne. But the fact is, is that he is the first and that's something that XM Magneto cannot take away from Doom on Throne is that he is the first. Um, but then again, you know, Magneto XM is the first for XM, which is really great. I've seen some statues along the way that, you know, try to kind of cramp Doom's style, like being on the throne, which is uh, Kratos on throne from God of War. Um, I actually have that in my collection and it's not necessarily because Kratos is on throne, but just because I like the character, that's why I bought it. Right. And, um, the thing that's beautiful about like the whole Dr. Doom on throne statue is that there's so many reasons why people can decide to buy it. It can be because, you know, the story behind it, it can be the fact that, you know, this is, you know, a very legendary piece here and that, you know, they just have to have it in their collection or maybe it matches their setup or maybe it's just the fact that, you know, they basically collected all that they could have collected, but they just want to have that masterpiece there, you know? So I actually enjoy anytime I see a collection and I see Doom on Throne there, I actually really enjoy seeing the people's take on it. Some, some people I actually see him not displayed on, you know, behind glass and maybe just out on the open, kind of close to the ledge. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you're taking a chance there. Like, you know what you have. But, you know, unfortunately, this is some of the reasons why, you know, a lot of these items are just showing up on eBay with, you know, some minor defects and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's a good point, bro. That's why all my stuff is in boxes right now because I don't want to go for a – I don't want to go the easy way with my display, bro. I want something nice, something that's going to be safe, you know, something that uh, is going to be there and something that's going to house my statue safely. Good point. Exactly, man. So, um, you know, about this statue, it is a very heavy piece. Um, pretty much one of the heaviest pieces. I wanted to make sure that when I had first got him and I didn't have my showroom, I had like a little like um, – you know, wooden cabinet, um, pretty much something like what it's on right now um, in this video. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to make sure that he was displayed very safely because he is a heavy piece. You don't want something like, you know, that's kind of just like screwed in and then the screw kind of gives way and it goes falling down. This is a legendary piece. You got to make sure that, you know, if you ever decide to get this in your collection or, um, you're looking for a place for him have somewhere sturdy don't take any chances you know next morning you can wake up and see doom on floor instead of doom on throne um don't take that chance <laughs> <laughs> doom on floor <laughs> i was done with you bro i don't blame you man <laughs> i don't blame you doom um, on floor that would suck. Yeah, man. So, 
It's it's a great piece, man. I really enjoy it. Um, you know, don't want to talk too much on pricing or what he's you know what he's worth now or what he will be worth or that sort of thing. It's just you know what, guys, look past what he's worth or what he's going for. I seriously think if you want it, buy it because you like it. But the thing is, I just want to remind everybody out there, myself, Chris, everybody, statue collecting is a luxury know what to spend on it don't like you know shortchange yourself your family your loved ones just to get a piece in your collection um you know myself as an example i actually decided to part with it because i knew that you know my family needed a home um you know i knew when to part with things and you know should times ever get tough again or that sort of thing i'm not going to be putting this as you know um priority over the important things in life. This is a luxury, you know, enjoy the luxury for those who can afford it, spend within your means. Don't go like strapping up the family, hurting yourself, depriving yourself of your necessities, skipping your breakfast just to, you know, put away money for Jim on throne. It's not like that. Buy it because, you know, you can afford it. You can live comfortably. You can enjoy it because if you're going to be like punishing to buy this thing or depriving your family of something, you're not going to enjoy it when you look at it. One day, that time will come when you can afford it, and um, you'll enjoy it more at that point. You know, this isn't like a lecture or anything like that, but it's just that this is my heart to your heart, basically. And if you do enjoy this statue, you will you already have it, I mean, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Right, Chris? You always got to put, like, a number on what something is worth, right? Yeah, for sure. And, and you're an example of that, man. I respect that. Like you say to yourself, you know, there's a certain price you're willing to pay for it. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. And I respect that, man. I really respect that. So what do you think, man? Should we like go into any more detail or you want to just call it quits here? Um, I think that we made a bold statement. Well, you made a bold statement with this review. And I think that we should kind of leave it at that. Um, yeah. I'm just going to go ahead with a couple of my last comments. Um, at first, I didn't really see the the kind of hype with this statue. Like when I first came into the community, um, everybody regarded it as a grail. I mean, I saw this thing like on my set. I mean, it's, it's going for crazy prices. And and now I'm seeing why, you know. Um, it's it's really growing on me. Um, I mean, if – if I did see this thing at, you know, at, at a price that I would pay for it, I'd pick it up no problem. You know, I mean, if I did have the expendable funds to get it, I'd pick it up 100%. Um, but uh, it, it definitely has grown on me since my first initial uh, impressions. And Omar kind of, um, through his through his experience, through his story, it kind of, uh, <laughs> it kind of, um, I want to say revalued the piece in my eyes, you know, it, it kind of brought this new light to it that I never really kind of saw, you know? Um, and it's, it's, it's awesome that we could, we could, that Omar could share that story with us and, um, you know, give, give you his little, uh, piece of the pie. And, you know, it means a lot to other people, but I think, I don't think you're going to ever find another doom on throne, Stash review with this with this kind of backstory, and I think that's uh, it's, that's really special. I don't think you could pretty much find any kind of review on YouTube with that much that much backstory and that much background and that much importance, you know. Um, so thank you again, bro, for sharing this with us. I, I'm it, it's growing on me fast, bro. It, it, it is every time I see it, I'm I'm impressed. And um, I'm glad that we were able to sit here and review it. Well, that's the whole reason why I just wanted to do something different. You know, like there's so many videos on YouTube already um, just talking about, you know, Doom on Throne and like talking about the specs. Some of them I just kind of regret looking at because they're like, this is a grill, this is a grill, this is a grill. Fast forward like 10 minutes, they're still saying it's a grill. And yeah. it's like, we understand that, you know, bring something new to the table. Give us like some information. And the thing is, is that um, usually with our reviews and unboxings, we discuss, you know, like, okay, well, this is what we see here. This is what, 
you know, is in the box and that sort of thing. But this is a statue that's been around for over a decade. We're going like 12 years and going forward, you know, I think everything has basically been said about this statue. And I just wanted to have a different take on it. Like here we are um, bringing out a video on this statue. Everything has already been said on it. If you're not gonna bring something new to the table, just don't bring it, it seems. Um, so you know what? I would like to open the floor to anybody who owns the statue and who does not own the statue. Okay, so for people who own the statue, what is your story behind the statue? How did you get into possession of it? Were you the first owner? Were you like the owner down the road? Um, have you ever owned the statue? Did you have to part the statue? How about, you know what, we start something here where we can have like, you know, a little paragraph from like people who watch this video, you know, even years down the road. What is your story behind the statue? And then people who don't own the statue, why do you want the statue? What are your thoughts on the statue? If you don't think that it's a grill, that's fine. You know, you don't need to comment. Um, I would just like to start something here, basically. What is your story? What is your history with the statue? Or and why do you want the statue? And I think it'll be something nice. Yeah, for sure, bro. And I don't think it even has to be just with, if you have any kind of story, any, you know, story that would stand out for any statue, not just Doom, tell us, tell us, you know, your biggest experience, you know, with a statue or a collectible, you know, what's your biggest story? You know, exactly. what what made that piece stand out? You know, what happened? What? Well, let us know, man. And especially with Doom, you know, for all those of you guys that do own him, let us know. Let us know if you're the first owner, like Omar said. You know, let us know your stories, guys. And the thing is, uh, you know, we're trying to do something here, like um, on Facebook. We have our site, uh, our Facebook page, page inside my showroom, where we like to take, um, you know, people's, with their permission, of course, if you don't mind sharing your collection, we would like to, you know, review your collection, show it to other people. And, uh, you know, if you don't mind doing that, please hit us up on Inside My Showroom. Uh, you know, share your collection and we would love to do that. So, you know, please feel free to comment in the description, your story, and also on Inside My Showroom. It'd be great. Please like, please subscribe, and we would love to bring you more videos. Absolutely, guys. Uh, you guys enjoy the rest of your night and the rest of your day. Thank you for tuning in. Omar, thank you for having me with this sick review. Peace out, guys. All right. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching.